Okay, someone said about English skills. How important is to have English skills? So let me just tell you this. The scholarship does state that they do give preference to those who, ha who have like a certain level in English or in Korean that have some sort of like proficiency test. But I have known people that came here without knowing perfect English. I would say that it is kind of a struggle because that's the way that everyone communicates. Like they all, like the whole language that we have in common with like my classmates, with my friends, it's English. That's the way we communicate every single day. And I can tell you like my English has improved like on a million percent since I arrived here. Like, I, I could say that it has improved more than my Korean. Like, I use it every single day. Sometimes I'm more comfortable speaking in English than speaking in my own language. And that's just because you use it every single day with everyone that's around you. It is not an impediment to learn, I think, because the classes that they teach you Korean in, they just teach you directly Korean. Actually, there's some teachers that might know English and might translate from English to Korean but in our case we had the amazing 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 teacher that well she has been one of the best teachers that I've had in my entire life she did not know almost any English at all like at all so she just started like just teaching us Korean from Korean not translating what it means but just teaching us what's the language like of course for like we have certain books for example we have topic in 30 days that's just like a list of words that you need to learn from English to Korean and in that case it can be kind of tricky but the textbooks in general they're just in Korean they don't bring like the English part so you're just like trying to get fully immersed in language without having to translate all like everything all the time I do think that it might be like a step back it would not be as easy for you but it's not something that like will make it impossible for you to study also they asked me for like tips in, in improving English I mean I feel like with an, any language that we, you learn also with Korean also with English the best things that I could say for me the things that work just like try to get fully immersed in language try to watch TV shows try to watch things that you like what do you like to do in your free time okay do the same things but in the other language I am a huge music fan so what I do, it's listening to a lot of songs, trying to listen to the songs and get what the meaning are saying. Just put songs in English, try to listen to podcasts, try to see shows. I've been talking English for like, I don't know, almost 20 years now. Um, <gasps> holy mother f holy f holy f holy f there is a huge f cockroach. Yeah, that's so disgusting. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Ya abrí la ventana, voy a intentar que se suba en esta wea para tirarla y no tener que acercarme a ella. ¡Conche tu madre! ¡Ay, qué hago! Bueno, no quiero matarla porque qué pena, pero. ¡Conche tu madre! ¿Cómo la saco? Decisión ejecutiva: ¿era la cucaracha o yo? Lo siento, cucarachita. Okay, I don't even know where I was off. Like, where did I left off? Okay, so everything turned out terrible. Yesterday, after the cockroach attacked me, I left the camera on, so my camera ran out of battery. And then it was already like 3 a.m. when it was already charged back, so... <sighs> it's the very next day, and I'm gonna continue talking what I was talking. I kinda know where I was... Like, what I was speaking about, but if it's kinda off, it's because of that. So I remember that I was talking about English. I've been speaking English for almost 20 years now since I, since the very first time that I started learning. I started learning when I was four. Right now I'm gonna turn 24. So it's been almost 20 years that I've been speaking English. Not constantly, it's only been like two years since I've been like using um, English on the daily. The other, the Otherwise it was just like class. Even though I've been speaking for a long time, I still continue to improve my English every single day like every time I watch things in English I watch them with subtitles even though I probably understand what they're saying um, I watch it with subtitles because it's always a new way to like learn new vocabulary learn new pronunciations I definitely think that's a very good way to improve like if you're gonna watch something in English and you have like the understanding you just need to like build more vocabulary or understand more pronunciations or just get, get more fluent to it just add subtitles to something um, the other thing that I recommend that I also do it with Korean is like if you want to build more vocabulary or learn more English 
is like every single day like don't go and try to get like a very big goal at once because it can be like very overwhelming just try to set it as tiny goals for every day so try to learn three or five new words every single day um, and then the next day just remember those words and add new three or new five words to your to your vocabulary or like grammar like if you want to learn a new grammar just learn one new grammar every single day or two grammars I don't know per week and then the next time you just review those grammars and then you add on to other grammars one other things that I've been doing with Korean for like vocabulary for vocabulary what I do is um, I have my wall like written all over and not, not literally the wall but I just write on notes so whenever I sit down to like do anything like even if it I'm on my computer I'm gonna read those notes so then they're like gonna be instinct instinct instinctively instinctively see I, I mean I still struggle with English instinctively in your brain like they're gonna be just stored there somewhere I could do like a whole other video regards languages because I feel like it's way too broad to just fit in one question. If you're interested in that, just let me know down there. Next topic. The next question is, was it hard or easy to adjust? This one I can only give my personal experience because I think it varies from person to person. For some people it can be very hard, for some people it can be very easy. Um, it literally depends on how your personality is as a person, on how independent you are in how attached you are to your family in my case i've always been very independent i had gone abroad for a long time by myself before um and i've never been like really dependent on anyone to do everything so like the adaptation like moving to a new country by myself and learning how to like basically function it was not really hard for me but I, I mean I was the oldest of the KGSPs that arrived the year that I arrived I do get it that I was probably a bit more experienced or a bit more mature than some of my classmates some of them were just like literally leaving high school so yeah like to me it was not a huge step in like adapting in sense of like independence and like functioning by myself or like even being like homesick it was not that bad for me I do know some people that had like a really rough couple of first months because they were so attached to their families so the distance and like not being able to like have someone there was rough but uh, I mean everyone has pulled through you know like you it's gonna be like if you suffer from homesickness and if you suffer from like feeling lonely it's only gonna last a couple of I don't know maybe like a month a couple of days some weeks it really varies from person to person for example in my case I arrived directly to my language training program and then everyone's in the same page as you you know like they're all learning that like you're gonna be placed in a class that people have kind of the same or like similar level level to your knowledge so you're all going through the same experience you're all like probably living alone so making friends is really really simple and it gets like for example friends that I've made in my language training program have become my family they're my family now they're my support system here it's it's not bad at all like it definitely helps a lot with feeling lonely and feeling homesick and sometimes you feel like you want to give up but there's someone next to you that's going through the same thing that can understand you that can be there for you so it's not a lonely place you'll never be alone here like i have never felt alone like i have no one here that never happens i have my family here and I'm extremely, extremely happy. Safety in Korea, what do you think about safety? I just have to say the biggest thing that I love about Korea is how safe it is. I know that it maybe it doesn't feel like that for um, people that come from really, really safe countries. If you're coming from Latin America like me, there's not even a point of comparison. At home, everything's dangerous. For being a woman, you're in danger 100% of the time. And right here, I can go outside alone at night and nothing will happen to me getting used to that was such a shock getting used to the fact that i can go outside for like going to the store or like just like walking to the subway and i can do it by myself and nothing will happen to me like what is that is is this like another like planet like i love that about here like it's extremely 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 safe in my country you cannot leave anything alone ever like if you're traveling in the subway you need to grab your backpack on the front if you're in a restaurant or like a cafe in, in a cafe by yourself 
and you want to like go to the bathroom you need to take your things with you here it's nothing like that studying at a, at a cafe and like you want to leave your computer there people just go to the bathroom and then you come back and everything's there and nothing's gonna happen that's so weird i still haven't gotten used to that like i still act like i'm in my country and sometimes people see it as weird like why are you acting like that but i mean have you ever been to latin america it's extremely safe here and i mean it does have its pros and cons like any other country in the world of course the only thing that makes me kind of scary that it makes me like kind of like I, I am more careful about it it's about the like secret cameras that it's kind of common here to hide cameras in bathrooms and fitting rooms so that's the only point that i'm really really cautious about every time i enter somewhere i just like search the room to see if there's any type of camera there because that actually yeah kind of terrifies me but if you were talking about like the daily basis kind of safety as a woman i adore living here like it's freedom like literally i feel free to do wherever i can here that has never happened to me before like i don't know how to live like that it's 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 a whole different type of attitude or like that i have to grasp on life and i still haven't gotten used to it definitely but it's extremely safe so it, in regarding to your question if, if it's Korea safe, like, it's extremely safe, so yeah. Next question. Uh, money. Is the money that we're provided enough? It is 100% enough. From now on, the scholarship actually got bigger. It's 100,000, 100,000 won more than what we were receiving. I gotta tell you, I mean, for, if you're gonna live, if you wanna live like a rich life person and just buy luxurious stuff all the time and go out on shopping sprees and buying shoes and buying clothes that, trust me, I was there for a while. The money is, is gonna be like, not short, but it's gonna be like, just right. Um, right now, for example, that we're living in coronavirus and literally the only thing that I have to buy is food. I could like save so much money. You definitely can save a lot of money while being here. Like for basic needs, it covers everything that you might need in basic needs. And it even leaves space to buy things, to go out, to travel. So yeah, the money is 100% enough. By the way, I, I don't live in the dorms. So I'm renting my own apartment. And even for renting my own apartment, I still have enough money. So I will get in like a whole, like this is another topic that I will cover some other day about living here and rent and expenses. But yeah, the money that the scholarship provides us, it's 100% enough. You don't have to worry about money. The flight. Okay, the next question is about the flight. And I, I, I don't really know how to answer this because it really depends on where you were coming from. I was coming from the other side of the world. Literally, you cannot go farther than Chile from Korea. It took me a 46 hour flight to get here. I mean, not 46 hour flight, but a 46 hour travel. It was kind of terrible. The flight really depends where you're coming from. There's some people that travel two hours, three hours to get here, which so envious about that. But yeah. Special interview and art portfolio. I, I, I don't know how in depth I can answer this some universities will ask you for a special interview once you have applied to them just to like know you better i had to give one interview it was via skype it's basically like reintroducing yourself like re like basically what i did was just like saying the same things that i said in my personal statement but just like more honestly face to face they just asked me who i was like how was my family why would i why did i want to study in that university why did i chose the major that i did what were my future plans and what were my motivations basically they just want to know you a little bit better that was the case with my university interview it was in english and it was two people that were interviewing me i'm not gonna say the names of any universities that i applied just because i don't want to even being 100% honest it was not a very good experience because the people were very like close-minded so they kept asking me why was I so old and I was applying to a new school and then they proceeded to ask me if I'm an only child so they saw that in my application and they proceeded to ask me if I would be okay as a woman to live in another country without my parents I feel like it was just the people that interviewed me were not the correct fit so I did I, I actually ended up having like this not great vibe from that university but that was my experience the, the interview in general was just like to know me better to know my motivations and to know just 
who I am and why I was applying to their university. In my case, I'm an art related major, so what they did ask for me almost every university that I applied to was a portfolio. I did have to send my portfolio to every university, so if you're applying through an art major, do prepare a portfolio with your works. That also really depends on the university that you're applying to what they're looking for. One university that I really, really liked did not like my portfolio. I actually passed the first stage of selection. So they were like, okay, you just have to send us our, your portfolio and then you're basically in. And then I sent my portfolio and they didn't like me. So, so then I just figured even if they didn't like me, I think that was not the university for me. The portfolio was a thing that I actually, I was actually proud of. I've been working almost four years as a stage designer. So I was really proud of what I've done. And if they didn't like me, maybe it wasn't the university for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna, I already said, I'm not gonna say any names of universities because that's not the point. I just want you to be prepared. So if you're an art reader major, please, please do prepare your portfolio. Don't stress if they ask you for an interview, they just wanna know you better. There's no way of preparing, you don't have to study, you don't have to do anything. Just be yourself, be honest. Don't get scared if you don't like the university or if you didn't like the interview. Or if the university, I don't know, doesn't accept you at the first stage because I mean, I already said it before, you need to find the perfect university for you. Not every university is made for everyone, not everyone's made for every university, so yeah. It's just like finding a new shoe. You need to find the one that fits perfectly for you. Okay, that's it for today. I, I'm sure that I missed some questions, but it's already a very long video, so maybe I'll do a round two if you have more questions to ask me. Don't think twice about writing in the comment sections if you have more questions. I'll, I can do a part two. I can answer more questions. If you can contact me on my Instagram and then you remember that you have another question, just write it there. I'm always up for answering any concerns that you might have. I hope you're good. I hope you're staying safe inside at home. If you like this video, please like and comment and maybe subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content. And I'll see you in another video.